welcome to our review on controlling your blood glucose levels. So first thing we need to understand then are what hormones actually are. So a hormone is a chemical which is going to be secreted from glands into the bloodstream. They then travel through the blood to what's called a target organ and it's in these target organs they're going to have their effect. The hormones will be regulating the functions of many organs and cells and they're going to be used to coordinate many processes in the body. So the diagram on the right there just shows you some of the areas that produce these hormones in our bodies. So what we actually have are the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland up in the head and they're going to produce hormones that then regulate the production of other hormones. In the neck area you can see we've got the thyroid gland which produces this one called thyroxine. Then as you come further down to the lower part of the body you can see we've got the adrenal glands which produce the hormone adrenaline. We've got the pancreas which produces the insulin and then depending on if we're male or female the females have got ovaries which produce estrogen and progesterone and the males have got their testes which produces the testosterone. What we find if we compare the two different methods of communication in our body, the hormones and the nerve impulses, is that when we're thinking hormones, then generally these are slower changes that are occurring compared to our nerve impulses. So the body's going to react more slowly to hormones than to nerve impulses there. We do have an exception to this though, which is the hormone adrenaline, which we have released when you're scared or if you're on a roller coaster, for example and this one actually acts quickly. Now, what we tend to find is that hormones will bring about long-term changes. So things like puberty, for example, that's all regulated by hormones and those are bringing about much longer-term changes. And what we find is that the hormones are synthesized in one place, they're released, and from there, they travel to another location in our body through the blood to where they're gonna have their effect, that target organ. Thinking about blood glucose levels then, we're worried about a hormone called insulin for this. Now, insulin is made in the pancreas and its whole function is to control the blood glucose levels. Now, if we don't have enough insulin available to us in our bodies, then we can develop a condition called diabetes. So if we consider the situation where we've got too much glucose in our blood, what happens is that the pancreas secretes insulin that goes into our bloodstream and travels through the blood to the liver. And in the liver, it triggers the effect where extra glucose from our blood is gonna be taken up by those liver cells and it will be converted into this substance called glycogen where it's a storage chemical. So we don't store just glucose as itself. What we do is we convert it into this chemical called glycogen, which is much better for storage in our body. Diabetes occurs in two types. We've got type 1 diabetes, which is caused by the immune system within your body, destroying the cells in the pancreas that make insulin. As a result of that, our body can't make enough insulin. So the way we've got to control type 1 diabetes is by using insulin injections at mealtimes, by ensuring we take regular exercise, and by eating a balanced diet. Type 2 diabetes, however, usually occurs later on in life, and they're could be a link here to being overweight. So what we find here is that the cells in our body are not responding to insulin and as another one the pancreas also may not be making enough insulin. Now the way we'll control type 2 diabetes is by eating a balanced diet primarily and we can also take some medications to stimulate more insulin being produced inside our body. But some people will actually need insulin injections if it gets too serious and the insulin levels are too low. So if someone suffers from diabetes, then they have to test their blood on a regular basis to see how much glucose is present in it. And the way they do this is usually with a little pinprick in the finger and then they place that drop of blood onto a little test strip which is then these days usually read by a little machine and they get a digital number there that tells us how much blood glucose they've got. Now, in terms of how they can manage their condition, they've got to make sure that they're avoiding eating too much sugary food and they should also inject insulin if there's too much glucose present because if the glucose level is too high, obviously they need to inject the insulin into their body in order to bring it back under control once more. Finally, one thing that people with diabetes can do to help control their blood glucose level is by taking exercise. 
So exercise actually uses up some of the glucose in the blood in order to make the energy. So taking exercise can help to regulate the blood glucose levels. Now what we'll find is that working out the dosage of insulin they need to inject into their bodies if they're taking the insulin injections is very dependent on their lifestyle. So it will depend on what they're eating in their diet. So if they're eating a higher sugary diet or more carbohydrates, which are obviously broken down into sugars, then they're going to need a higher dose of insulin to then bring that back under control. And it also correlates to how active they are. So someone who's doing more physical activity will be using their own glucose before the insulin is needed. So they won't need such a high dose of insulin. 